talks as November approaches, investors getting nervous that the election could affect markets, are they? Well, we'll see. Uh, joining us right now is Kinjin Banerjee. She's the lead writer for Markets Live at The Wall Street Journal. Do you really believe that, that folks are getting nervous about the election and that's what's leading to all this volatility? Right now, maybe it's not leading to this volatility, but what I have been hearing from financial advisors, people on Wall Street strategists, is that this comes up at every single meeting that they're right. taking with clients. What's going to happen in the election? How will it impact individuals' portfolios? And we actually are seeing this in the market already. We're seeing people hedge for volatility in the October, November timeframe. That's around that election. So it's very interesting. If you look back at, at history, um, right prior to the election, actually, there's not always been crazy volatility because there's always an expectation that people seem to think that they know what's going on. It's usually in the summer months uh, where you have some of that. What are you seeing? Right. And I think the data does show that things tend to be volatile ahead of the election. Once that uncertainty passes, major indexes typically rally. One investor said to me, vote with your vote. Don't right. vote with the trade because there isn't too much of a difference in terms right. of long term performance for the S&P 500. Is this time different insofar as we know we, we know what the current president's policies are and the way he would manage. And we know what the former uh, president's policies are and maybe the way that he would manage. So the Wall Street Journal recently reported that Trump allies are looking for ways to potentially have the president influence interest rate policy, play more of a role in how the central bank operates. That didn't happen last time Trump was president. So kind of did. <laughs> He was talking constantly. Yeah, it did. About he Jay was Powell tweeting about Powell. Yeah. Real estate, I need low rates, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. We, we do know what these two candidates' policies look like, but they have such different views on everything from immigration taxes. to the economy. Right. Taxes. Taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes. That's the number the one two thing. Keys, can, taxes and tariffs. Those yeah. are the two things that, that uh, and if, I mean, that capital gains uh, proposal would never happen, but, and also, uh, really unrealized uh, gains, and th that'll never well, happen. Well, that's on either. one side, but then, the right, and then you China, and you got tariffs China on tariffs on the other, and how inflationary is that going to be? I know. Well, tariffs are, are uh, that's not a conservative tenet, uh, usually, uh, a big ramp up in tariffs. I don't know what It's not. And, Andrew, you're asking about volatility. We're already seeing election related volatility. Right. Think about Donald Trump's social media company. It's been swinging right. like a meme stock. Clean energy. Clean energy stocks rallied a lot before Biden's last election. Right. So you could see this volatility you, okay, at the single so stock Okay, so you just mentioned Truth Social. What do, you, what do you think is going on with that stock? It's become a mean stock. I think it's become a proxy for how people are viewing Trump's polling, his candidacy. And I think we're going to continue to see intense volatility there heading into the election. And do you, do you see it as a mechanism to get him cash ahead of the election, as a, a sort of like fundraising mechanism? For some investors, yes. Um, that's what I've been hearing. Some investors are turning to that, thinking of this as a way to benefit Trump um, and, right. and to, to get him this kind of big cash windfall. And for a while, it seemed to work. 